Good afternoon and welcome to Afternoon Express. Now, great friends offer emotional support and make you feel loved and connected. But sometimes finding or being a great friend is tough. So today we unpack what makes a good friend, learn what a toxic relationship is and how to let go of a toxic friendship. To kick off the show, we have therapist and social worker Kim Abrahams on the couch who is going to tell us what makes a good and great friendship. Welcome to The Loft. Oh, Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Now, Thanks. Kim, just to kick off the topic of today, please break down for us why are good friendships so important? You know, if we think about it from a purely just from a mental health perspective, it's so valuable to have people around you who can be part of your tribe. Sometimes we have family members that we don't feel close to and we can't actually rely upon. And then you have friends who can actually just take the load off life, I think, when it gets really dark and just to help you just to feel supported. Yeah. That for me is one of the most important things to know that you have people who have your back no matter what. It is about that community at mm. the end of the day and building that community. And um, I like to say, you know, friends are the family that you get to choose. Absolutely. Those are those unique individuals yeah. amongst the millions that resonates with you. And as much as we are all individuals and we all mm. look for different things in friendships, there have to be some overarching qualities that we have to look for in friendships. What would some of totally. those be? So I think as we go through, you know, when, when we're young, we don't have a a lot of uh, criteria for yeah. friends <laughs> um, it's just kind of you know who's fun to hang out with yeah. and as you get older you need people around you who can be reliable I think people who know how to hold space and by that I mean when you are having a bad day doesn't mean every friend can fulfill this need but just when you are having a bad day to know that hey I can call on this person mm. and they will be there for me um, having a friend who you can trust yeah. and who will be supportive of you. One of the things that we don't often talk about in friendship that I think is really important to think about is that friends understand when you don't have capacity. Yeah. So when your capacity mm. is running dry, you know that you can say to friends, look, I, I can't make it and they won't be cross with you. Um, your capacity and having a friend who understands that is so vital. And I feel like that also speaks to having a friend who's a good listener, mm. who won't just, you know, you say one thing and they concoct their own conclusion at the end of the day. How yeah. important is being a good listener as a friend? It is the one skill I think we're not taught <laughs> as human beings that I think everybody should have a lesson in. Being an active listener can change your whole trajectory of how you bond with people. Mm. So being a good listener means that you are not thinking about your response. You're actually listening to what the person's saying to you mm. and not always feeling like you have to give an answer. Sometimes it's okay to say, I don't know what that is like, but I'm sorry you're going through that. Yes. Um, you know, we, we're not all going to go through the same experiences in life, but being able to know that somebody can actively listen to you mm. so that you feel seen is so vital. I think what's also important is someone that you can spend quality time with mm. and just have a good time with. Absolutely. And it's so nice when you have a friend who you can be with and you don't have to say anything. Mm. Um, but I'll give you a little tip that can actually help when you're trying to connect with a friend. When a friend is coming to you maybe with a problem and you don't know what to say, you can ask them, do you want me to listen yeah. or do you want me to help you to find a solution? And I've used that in my friendships, especially as I've gotten older now. And I've realized the importance of it because people, again, they, they feel seen mm. and they, they don't always look to you to have a solution. Sometimes people just want to, to talk like you would just want to talk to your fiance after a long day and you're not always looking for a solution. So I think practicing the art of asking those questions can, it can really change the way you connect with people. And for me, I find I'm a very empathetic person. Mm. So I feel I will take on your load as if yeah. it is mine. Yeah, yeah. But also it is super difficult sometimes when you are celebrating something and your friend comes to you and says, I cannot celebrate this in this moment because mm -hmm. I'm going through my own thing. Now I need to kind of change my mentality and my celebratory mood and be empathetic towards you. How important is empathy in friendship? Oh, it's probably one of the cornerstones in, in relationships. I think we can have a confusion between empathy and sympathy. Yeah. You know, sympathy is saying, I'm sorry that, Ach, that happened to you. Shame. Yeah, you know, empathy is saying, I don't know exactly what it feels like, but I'm here to listen and I'm here to, to hold space for you. Empathy is the thing that allows people to know they can come to you mm -hmm. um, and you can just be there. You don't always have to speak 
to show empathy. Empathy can be just hugging somebody. It can be just showing up for something that's important to a friend. Mm -hmm. That's saying, I, I, I want to know what it's like to be in your shoes and I'm willing to try. Well, that yeah. has been so informative, but also something that everyone can relate to because we all have friends in our lives. Kim, yeah. I really appreciate oh, you, thank you and your valuable, valuable words. Oh, thanks, Ali. <laughs> Now on social media, we would like to know, kindness, loyalty, a good listener, or maybe it's just something else. What are the qualities that you look for in a friendship? Leave your comments and please do remember to use the hashtag Afternoon Express. Now don't go away because after the break, we are going to unpack the signs of a toxic friendship. Our pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. This is Pharmacy of the Week. Our pharmacy is a newly established business. We started three years ago. We started with not enough capital, but with the help of Arkok Ingram, they gave us an opportunity to start our business. And at the moment, we are a successful female black owned business. We always aim at providing a very safe and a supportive environment for our customers. When leaving the pharmacy, I would like them to feel that they were heard and obviously that they were well taken care of from a professional point of view. Because we are the first line of defense. When someone starts to feel a cold or they start to feel a cough or they start to feel anything, we are the first stop, the first go to and then that way it serves us because they are able to trust us and they are able to come to us all the time. Brave to me means finding courage and discipline to deal with difficult situations. Parkland's Pharmacy, good health is wealth. Pharmacy of the Week, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram, OTC, sponsors of Brave. Inspiring communities, one pharmacy at a time. With schools opening again, teachers and parents will face difficult situations like tummy cramps, teething, pain and fever, scratches and scrapes, allergies and coughs. Adcock Ingram OTC brings you a wide range of products to help parents take care of those challenges. Brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC sponsors of Brave. Welcome back. Now we are now going to chat to two great friends to discuss their unique relationship. Please welcome influencers, content creators, Aisha Baker and Akila Haran Ali. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hello. Yeah. It's so incredible. Well, Aisha, welcome back to the show. And Akila, it's so lovely to have you join us. Now, ladies, before we kick off, I just want to say a celebration and a nod to Eid that you have both experienced and yes. been able to celebrate thank a few you. days oh, ago. Thank, thank so you. Much. And when it comes to your friendship, how long have you guys been friends for and when did you meet? I always get this one wrong. <laughs> so Akila like has to take it. So uh, we met in 2010. So we have been friends and known each other for like 14, 14 years. years. Yeah. yeah, so we met through a mutual friend at an event and then I used to have this um, little vintage brand back in the day and I needed a model and this one was I was stunning <laughs> on the internet like slaying some looks before that was even a thing and I needed someone and she stepped up and she killed it obviously and we just became friends after that. You guys were both pioneering the space with blogging and being content creators and just not only selling lifestyle, but the real authentic you. And yeah. you've been able to build individually such incredible brands. Now, how has that then changed the dynamic of your friendship? Because I know someone like me who's an actress, social media person, and also a TV presenter, they say, you cannot have a friend, mm -hmm. call them a friend, in the same industry because you actually after the same bag at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So how has that dynamic That's worked? That's actually a really great question. So initially when we had started, we were just so passionate about um, being creative and um, Akila was very into photography at the time and uh, I was into fashion and writing mm. and Akila is also a brilliant writer. So we connected on the same things and we definitely had conflict around being in the same industry, mm. especially because at one stage we were the two only Muslim women. So we really were competing for the same bag, mm. essentially. Mm. And then I think we worked through that um, yeah. and we had time apart as friends. Um, 
which I think we'll get into. Um, so yeah, we, we work through those issues um, mm -hmm. by kind of understanding that there is there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked me a question earlier, you know, is the influencer and a content creator space saturated now? I believe not, and I think you share this belief. Yeah. Mm. Because there's, there's really enough um, money or and brand space. deals to go around. Um, and we're really unique. We have different audiences, even though yeah. we are so similar. Mm. There are different people who follow us for different reasons. Our point of view and our voice is different. So, um, But we have definitely had conflict around that for sure. Mm -hmm. You're both married women. You have kids, but you need to make time for each other. I'm sure play dates must be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. Yeah, so basically, well... In terms of our friendship, so we were in a place a couple of years ago where we were not fighting, but we were just very focused on our own lives. We were very much cool. Um, and I was actually on a fertility journey that had been quite a battle. And she already um, had her son and I think was pregnant that just had um, her daughter. And I just needed someone to talk to. And I just felt like there was just nobody else that was going to get me and get mm. it. And I just felt it was like my gut just said to me, just speak to Aisha. And we were talking about something totally different, work-related at the time. And I just said, I need to talk to you. Like it's 2011. I need to talk <laughs> to you. I need to tell you this thing. I'm pregnant. And I promise you, since that had, since I told her that, like our friendship just like blossomed like on a whole other level. And she mm. was there for me. Like... Like crazy, like I will never forget. I'm mean, actually trying not to get emotional. Oh, that's <laughs> that's so really sweet. I'm getting the way emotional. that you just like stepped up for me on another level because once you're in that space, like pregnancy and everything, it can feel very isolating. Mm. Young girls, boys um, are going through this. Young friendships in the midst of social media. What advice would you give those um, young to some groups, a short, short answers. What advice would you give them? Oh, that's a tricky question. I actually know the answer. Oh, you do? Okay, go I do. It. In short, it's not real. Yeah. So Ooh. as much as you can be authentic and put yourself out there and all of that, even if you have the height of success, just always keep in mind who's been there for you and be there for the people who are in your life yeah. because Everybody gets their 15 seconds of fame. We all have our moments where we go viral. And then you know what? It dies and then somebody else gets their moment, which is great. But don't, it's really important not to let that get to your head. And it's, it's actually more important to have people who keep you grounded. Obviously, within reason, if they are toxic, it might not work out as well for you. But if you've got a real one, hold on to them. Well, people are in your life for a different reason and a different season. Mm -hmm. And it's so lovely to see that the season and the reason when it comes to you two oh. is still going strong. Oh, thank, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thank you for having us. What more can one ask for in a friend of Zanzi? Aisha Baker and Akila Haran Ali are living testaments to the fact that support and respect are beacons of long-lasting success in any friendship. We're in Zanzibar for Tropical Island of Treasure. Are you? Did you just swim here from South Africa? There's an easier way to find fame and your share of a smooth million rand fortune. Simply upload your audition to social media, explain why you're a match for our celebs. Add the hashtag Tropica and tag at my Tropica and we can see you in Zanzibar. Buy a Tropica now and enter to be on the island. From an example of a healthy friendship to discussing toxic friendships. Now let's face it, life isn't always a box of chocolates and friendships can turn rocky and even sour. But how do we know when a friendship has become toxic or even already toxic in nature? We're about to find out with social worker Utobega Pumlele Mbogazi. Welcome to the show, Sis Tobega. Thank you for having me. I'm happy and glad to be here. Sister Vega, just to start the conversation, what does it mean to be in a toxic relationship and how are you able to tell once a relationship has turned toxic? The moment it feels wrong, it often is exactly that. So when you feel in any type of way and you feel as if it's negative, we often tend to ignore our sixth sense, but the feeling is there. It's the human nature, it's absolutely natural, but we decide just to ignore and hoping the person will change hoping that there will be maybe just me misreading or me overanalyzing some situation. But the number one threat that you can see is the lack of attention, the support that you're not receiving. Mm. And sometimes when you speak to someone and sharing your personal situations or personal stories, they tend to belittle you. 
and say, oh, your story is better. At least you haven't gone through what I had gone through and not actually giving you the way to explain what has happened, what you had gone through and how you are truly feeling. And they just interrupt you in the middle of your conversation and in the middle of you trying to share your feelings and they compare themselves to you. The second one could be jealousy. Yes. You yes. know, a, lo hey. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people when it comes to friendships, um, I feel two ways about the jealousy topic because a lot of times, girl, ain't nobody jealous of you. We're just trying to advise you and help mm -hmm. you. But sometimes it is blatant and it is quite obvious. So how do we break down looking at that jealousy aspect? Okay. There's a positive type of jealousy and then there's a negative aspect of it. So it becomes toxic and poisonous for lack of a better word when someone envies you to the extreme mm. when it's just too good to be true when whenever that you are for example when you're dressed up in a particular way they say oh you look you look look great perhaps in that outfit but mm. there's always a, a but. but there's mm. always a but and I, you know when you speak about there's a positive side of jealousy and a negative side of jealousy for me i actually want to if you would allow me sure. swami to take away the word jealousy within the positive realm and say there's positive inspiration. Yes. You can be inspired, inspired by someone. Definitely. You can find it inspiring and uplifting or you can just downright be jealous. And sometimes if they lean on the jealousy, it introduces gossip. Gossip. There we go. Gossip. And if we talk about gossip, it can be a negative because as a friend, we expect someone to offer the support, yeah. to be the strength, to be the shoulder that you need. But when your confidentiality mm. is taken away from you in a form of jealousy and in a form of gossip, meanwhile, you are just confiding in a person, not knowing that the person that you are confiding in is actually the person behind your for your downfall. Mm. And gossip is speaking ill of the other person, yeah. obviously, and in a, with, a, with an intention of trying to bring them down. And as you also mentioned that there is difference and a variety between jealousy and envy. Mm -hmm. You think the person envies you, but meanwhile, behind the scene, it's not exactly it's what not you that. perceive. Another thing that I personally have experienced, and you know, we kind of touched base with it with Aisha and Akila's conversation, having friends in the same industry can be extremely supportive and uplifting, but, but also... Being yeah. in the entertainment space, and I suppose in any aspect or yes. industry, there can be people who always want to put themselves in the center. Always what I call it a god complex. Mm -hmm. When someone or or, or or main 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 character syndrome, where you always have to be staring the center of attention, that can be a negative. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, whatever that we do is in a nutshell motivated by our upbringing. Mm -hmm. Most often, we 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 tend to think no my friend turned out to be this way because of A, B and C, because of how he or she was raised. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it can also be not because of how you were raised because your background does not always have to determine how you turn out to be. Mm -hmm. For example, when, a pot, when, when there's water in a pot and you put an egg and then the egg might harden on the outside and then the, you're able to have, to have and feast on the boiled egg. But when you put in a potato, the potato will be easier for you to consume. Wow. But you can't consume an egg without you peeling off the shells from the egg. Nah? So it depends how you view and how you take your situation, meaning the boiling water in your, in your, in your life at that time. It either hardens you or it softens you like a potato. Yes. I love that analogy and I'm definitely going to take it <laughs> with me. Thank you so much, Sister Omega, but we're not done with you. We're still going to continue to unpack this important topic a little bit later. All right. Thank you. Now, this is a lot to take in, but a very serious issue that may sometimes be hard to deal with. But after the break, we are going to talk some more about how to to remove yourself from a toxic friendship. Welcome back. Now, whilst we celebrate friendship in all its forms today, we also want to give a special shout out to all our friends who are lactose intolerant. Just because you can't eat dairy doesn't mean you have to be limited in the kitchen. Now, today we are showing you how to make a delicious breakfast stack made with crumpets, eggs, avo, and bacon. And making it all possible, it's Clover's No Lack Lactose-Free Milk, which also has a new look and looks great. Now, my friend. Show me. 
I feel like this dish is a perfect dish to make with friends or for friends. Definitely. I mean, it's so simple. And listen, breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time, these are great. And this will bring our friendship closer, oh, I believe. Always, always, always. always. So we're going to get started. <laughs> so we're going to start off with what makes the base of our, of our stack, which is the crumpets over mm -hmm. there. So I've got some self-raising flour. And then to get that nice rise, because remember, we're doing crumpets and not pancakes, which okay. are the flatter ones. We're going to use some extra bicarb in there. Mm -hmm. Now, the sort of trick to getting them nice and fluffy is starting off by whisking your flour. And this ensures that you have a nice fluffy crumpet. Mm, so I we're like that. set that aside. So we've got one egg in here and I'm going to ask you to pass over the clover uh, lactose free, the clover low lac, and I'm going to go in with a cup and a half. Okay. And if you don't know about clover no lac, clover no lac milk is a lactose free milk that will give you all the dairy goodness you need and deserve, and finally free you from the horrible side effects like bloating. Look, I've had to manage my situation with my uh, bloating and situations like that, but I've found that no lac, even though you might not even have situations like that, it is a great alternative for anyone that has, you know, lactose intolerance. So it is great to know that even if you do have friends that struggle with that, it allows you to be able to cr prepare such meals without worrying if they'll have a reaction. 100%. And I think it, it's it's so lovely because it gives you the, the goodness of dairy without mm -hmm. having that uncomfortable yeah. feeling at the end. So we're going to mix in our wet ingredients here to me. And I like to do this little by little okay. because you really want to manage the consistency of your batter. You, mm. you don't want it too runny and you also don't want it too stiff. So give that a quick stir. And then I think I'm going to go in with just a little bit more of this. In fact, I think we're going to go in with all of that. Give it a stir. Now, this is such a great base for your crumpets, but we're going to go more to the savory side because oh. we're doing some breakfast stacks. Okay. So what I've got here is I've got some cloves. Smell that. Ah, oh, that light little onion flavor. Light little onion flavor. It's not too pungent, especially in the morning. <laughs> um, so I've got in with nicely chopped um, chives in there and then, of course, some seasoning. So some salt. Friend, what I've also noticed pepper. is that that batter t tends to be a little bit on the thicker side. It's yeah. not very runny like it would be if you're making a pancake, right? Precisely. I like to use a ladle when doing my crumpets. Uh, it just gives you a nice uh, consistent amount in your pan. And I've got the pan on a moderate heat here, too, because the last thing you want is for them to burn without cooking through. Like I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be fancy Come on, well. Chef to me. Come on, Chef to me. Show us what you got for those eggs. And I love how we're doubling up with the eggs because, yeah. you know, it's such a great source of protein. You can start, start to see little bubbles appearing. And we're going to wait a little bit more just for those bubbles to appear. In fact, I think we are onto something here, too. Yeah. There, there we go. go. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. Do you want to give me the base then? Give me one of our crumpets. We're just going to show you guys how to stack it up. So we're starting with the base of one of our crumpets over here. And then to that, I'm going to add one of our tomatoes. Oh, love the freshness. Do you want me to go... I know you said that one. Let's stack it up, girl. This is a stack, so we... <laughs> we, we, we we're shooting okay. for the stars today. Shooting for the stars. Some avo. I love that you've got some avo yeah, there. It's nice and fresh. Avo in there. there. We go. An egg goes on top. And then just a sprinkling of chives. And, and how delicious is that? Simple, easy, tasty. Love you, Friendship too. sealed. Love you. <laughs> Clover No Lack Milk will give you the freedom to make dairy-based meals that everyone can enjoy together. So if you want to spoil yourself or perhaps your bestie, then make these lactose-free breakfast stack. You can go on to afternoonexpress.co.za to get the full recipe list and ingredients on how to make this delectable dish. Friend, that looks good. Please make some more. Already on it. Say goodbye to nausea and cramps and say hello to delicious freedom with Nolak's range of lactose-free milk and yogurt. Be free with lactose-free. We continue our very interesting discussion on toxic friendships. We have covered what we define as a toxic friendship and the signs of a toxic friendship and relationship. But what happens when you need to get out of a friendship that has turned toxic? Now, Tobega is back on the couch to help us through this very difficult process. Tobega, what are those steps? How does it look like if you want to have an exit plan and leave a very toxic relationship? Okay. Before you have an exit plan, you need to know what is going on. Mm. So I often have these three questions in mind. It is the what, the how, mm. the why, and, and the, the wow. 
Oh, and the wow. Oh, wow. Yes. It is the what. So what is going on here? So those are your internal conversations that you're having with yourself and looking at the reality of things. What am I going through? What happened? Was it me? Was it the person? Was it my friend? How do I? It's just you observing and doing a self-introspection at this point. So you're answering the what is happening. Nah? And then you move on to how am I going to do this? Are you planning on living? But the key is before you leave, don't blue tick the person. Yeah, I was going to say ghosting. No, nah, no, don't. Don't blue tick. Don't ghost. Don't ignore. Communicate. And then we've got the why. The why is why am I leaving? Yeah. So you go back to answering the what is happening, the reason why you are deciding to leave. So why am I leaving? So I'm leaving because the relationship or the friendship was no longer working for me. It was draining me more than it was putting in. It was a give, 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 not a give, take, give, take, as how it should be going. And then the last one. The wow. The wow. <laughs> The wow is often my favorite one because that's when you go back to your drawing board after you've done all of the answering of questions and actually implemented all of them. The wow is where would you ideally want to be at? Mm. It's your wow moment. Like, wow, I've actually managed to speak. I've managed to express myself. I've managed to identify the cause of the problem and where to from here. So then that, to, to me, sounds like there has to be a lot of accepting reality. Definitely, definitely. And the acceptance comes from you knowing what is going on. Because if you don't know what's happening, it's di it will be difficult for you to accept. What would I be ex accepting if I don't know what is happening? And for someone like me, who I won't call myself wishy-washy, but I'm such a sentimental person and it's so difficult to say goodbye. So how important is being clear of your intentions? Okay, being clear, it, it's important because it makes you, uh, being, it helps you be aware of who you are. Mm. It requires self-introspection and then it requires you answering the questions that you would ordinarily want the other person to answer. For example, often in, in, in relationships or friendships, we want to feel accepted and you want to feel needed, but we are expecting those things to be done by the other person. That is the key, expecting. Mm. But then why don't you do those things for yourself? That way the notion or the term self-care comes in. Yeah. Look after the self so that you can be able to look after others. You can't continue to be giving and giving and giving. At the end of the day, you'll be giving your cup and throwing it to the next person. <laughs> That's when you crack, no? yeah. because your cup is already dried up. So now it's time for you to come back, draw yourself back to you, pour your cup again once again, and then you give again. There has to be some sort of forgiveness within yes. yourself to not talk ill of the next person yes. and just to be able to find that peace. Yes. How important is forgiveness and peace? It's easy for people to say forgive and forget. But in order for you to forgive, you need to know what's happened. And then you can be able to, after the introspection, you look at your own faults, you look at the other person's faults, and then you say, fine, this has been done, where to from here? Mm. You won't forgive and forget, but you'll forgive and move on. Absolutely. And it's so difficult to look at your own <laughs> wrongs. <laughs> you say that yes. you look at the other person's wrongs and you make peace with it, but you also need to look at yes. how did I contribute Definitely. to this whole situation? But at the end of the day, saying goodbye brings about grief. Yes. It's painful. How then do we manage those feelings? Nurture. Mm. Nurture yourself and care for yourself. As I mentioned, the one thing that we often want is to receive the same hugs or the same nurturing feelings that you want to give off. So do that to yourself, mm. pamper yourself, take yourself out, get yourself that ice cream that you often used to do with that dear friend, but do it for yourself. Buy the, the flowers that you often want, buy whatever, or go to the beach, that is costless. Go to the beach or find something creative that inspires you. And secondly, journaling, which is often a way of communicating. Hence, I was also emphasizing communicating your feelings across. Mm. Well, communicating can be verbal and nonverbal, but for healing to take place, there has to be a form of communication in whichever form. Communicating via writing, jotting down, journaling, or communicating verbally 
or communicating spiritually, that is a form of healing and as well as acceptance. And it will be a grieving process for you to get your closure at the end of the day. Thank you so much, Tobega. You have definitely shed light on a very sensitive and tough subject. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, in order to lead a healthy and full life, you need to remove toxic people from it. Be aware of the red flags in your friendships. And if something doesn't feel right, it's more than likely not right. Stay tuned for a scrumptious wurst and bacon recipe. Today's show is about friendships and we decided to do something for the boys. Now guys, you do not always have to connect around the braai. So how's about a scrumptious vors and bacon pasta that you can make with your buddy? Jay, you are calling the gents to come away from that braai stand. Not everything has to be done. <laughs> On the fire because I say braai not. Braai not. <laughs> That's a lovely one. Look, and this is quite a simple recipe, but exactly. very flavorful. Very flavorful, and it still delivers the same kind of flavors and textures that you would expect yeah. at a braai. It's just in a different form. So yes. let's get into it. So we've got our pan on the heat there, medium to high heat. Okay. I'm just going to put some oil into the pan there. So before you continue with this recipe, can you explain to me why you've chosen a vor specifically, bearing in mind that we're taking people away from their price stand to this. So why would we use vors in this particular recipe? I mean, firstly, because I think it's one of the greatest exports from South Africa, <laughs> full stop. And secondly, all the flavor in this meat already cuts out three to four ingredients. Yeah. So if you can think about, you know, your, your coriander seeds, sometimes nutmeg, clove, you know, it's got all that seasoning and so much fat in here that yes. adds flavor galore. Love so that's it. why we're using Burevors over here. And we're gonna sort of decase it and roll it into sort of golf ball sizes and get that frying into our pan. And I mean, the minute it touches yeah. the oil, it just screams of, you know, South Africa. I see you've gone for about like golf ball size. Yeah, you know, yeah, a plating of pasta. You sort of still want to, um, be a bit gentle with it just simply because you want everyone to get a bit of everything. Yes. Whereas if you make them too big, you might just find yourself yeah. missing out on a meatball when you yeah. dish up. And that's yeah. not what we want. So we've got our burrowos in there. And can you smell that? Can you look at that golden color that we're going for? So we're using quite a nice, um, you know, cast iron skillet. And that gives you the same kind of browning that you want yeah. in your burrowos. And you mentioned bacon earlier. I've got some diced bacon. And the thing is, people don't understand that this cooking process that you're doing now, where you're getting it on a high heat, it does release that smokiness because the oil basically keeps going. The liquid that gets released here causes it to sort of flame up and it has that smokiness. So you'd still have that braai stand situation, smokiness that you'd have if you were doing this out on a, I mean, if you're braying boars on a braai stand. But here, we still have that smoky flavor that's going to bind so well with the bacon and all the fl flavors that you're adding to this. And it also is just so simple because the bacon is already salted. Exactly. The vars is already sorted, so tick. it's very minimal. <laughs> it's a tick, 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 tick recipe. So now we're going to start building our sauce, right? So mm. we're going in with some garlic, fresh garlic, right? A bit of chili, just because I love a bit of a kick. Same. Um, Nowadays. Okay. Now. <laughs> I've started liking chilies, and I think it works especially for dishes like this with the tomato, where the acid and the, and the and chili works so well. Because why? Because balance. That's what we're <laughs> looking for today. So we're going to just toss that through, and then I'm going to add my tin tomatoes. Um, Again, such a humble ingredient, and available everywhere. We all have it in our in our pantries. Versatile. Yes, versatile. I was actually going to say that because it, it works as such a great binder of different types of textures as well. And and that acidity, if you find that it might be a little too much for you, just add a touch of sugar to balance it as well. Love that. But now, where we're coming with the balance is the good old faithful can of baked beans. And often, it has a bit of sweetness in there. So we're going to go in with a whole can. Oh, how good does this look? Oh. So this is actually some of the reserve pasta water that we have. You've cooked the pasta yeah. ahead of time. This is a great thickener. Again, you're saving costs. You're not adding another ingredient. You're not complicating it. So we're just going to pour a little bit of that mm -hmm. in and just look at that. You've already got your sauce. And the only thing we need to do is season with some salt and pepper. I like quite a generous amount of seasoning on top of 
what the burrowos is delivering today. And we've cooked our pasta very al dente in this instance because we're going to obviously just heat it up. Well, I mean, we're going to add it on top there. So if you want to check whether your pasta is al dente or not, I just use a trick where I put it between my finger. If it's overcooked, it'll be for mush. But if it's not overcooked, it basically has a bit of bounce. So you press it down and it doesn't flatten out. So you can use your fingers to taste or I mean to check or you can taste, but you don't want it overcooked because yeah, it becomes mush. Sure. And remember the sauce is hot, so it's gonna continue cooking and a bit of garnish and chooms. Voila! This is us on a plate. <laughs> we did it again, Chomi. We did it again. Friendships winning day <laughs> after day. And to get this recipe, you can head over to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe. Don't eat without me. And ingredient list to make this tasty recipe. <laughs> there are stories of creators and we're inspired by them all. We invite you to write your story with us. Your story matters. Absa. From the lively streets of Johannesburg to the stunning landscapes of the Western Cape, APSA has launched an inspiring wall murals campaign which is transforming South African streets into vibrant galleries showcasing diverse narratives. And Balas, I had the chance to explore Josie to meet two of the talented artists and discover the story behind their installations, highlighting the profound relationship between art and community. Just look at how beautiful this is. Now this wall mural is one of 156, which is a part of APSA's efforts to elevate the art scene in South African townships and celebrate the creativity of local artists. Sadika, it is so lovely to connect with you again, especially with such a colorful backdrop. Now we have just revealed APSA's new brand mantra, which is Your Story Matters. Can you tell us a little bit more about this campaign and how you've been able to bring it to life with these incredible wall murals? It's our new brand positioning campaign where we've really laid the fundamentals of identifying that there is an opportunity in everybody's story and everybody's story matters. So we've used this campaign to really articulate the importance of stories and everybody's story across the Pan-African region. Now, which artists did you decide to work with and how were they selected? Eight artists were selected from our La Atelier competition, some participants, some winners, and they were really selected on how they translated the brief of Your Story Matters. So across the country, 150 sites, you're gonna be able to see picturesque landscapes or large uh, format scales of their art in a unique rendition of Your Story Matter. Now this wall mural is one of many. How long will these be up for and where can South Africans enjoy them? These sites are going to be up, they're actually already up from the 25th of March until the 30th of June. And our encouragement is go out there, go view in your community these amazing pieces of work. Now 50 of the sites, Pali, are going to be Wi-Fi enabled, where passers-by can actually scan a QR code. And as you're viewing this beautiful piece of art, you can also scan a code to get the artist's story because their story matters. And why would you encourage South Africans to go out there and experience experience these pieces of work. Art, for many, many instances, in some cases can be perceived as for an elite few. We are breaking the boundaries by saying art is around your community, it's at your doorstep. Go out, immerse yourself in this beautiful immersive experience and really have the opportunity that many, many people do not always have the opportunity to encapsulate. Take in the art and enjoy it in your community. Michael, yes. what a beautiful and colourful piece that adds so much brightness to the street. How did it feel to know that you were selected to be a part of this campaign and know that your work will be presented publicly? I got a call from APSA about um, this project. Yes, I was so, so, so happy. Can you tell us a little bit more about this particular installation and how long it took for you to create the work? Uh, it took me about three months to finish this installation. This artwork here is titled The Rail of Migrations, where I was talking about how people will migrate. Because of most of, most of us, we are not here uh, from Johannesburg or from Haute. We migrate from the rural area to come here for employment, better education. So the theme it was about moving from the rural coming to the city. And then the reason why I chose to do it as a train station, especially is where different people meet for destinations from across across the world.
Mattis' mantra is all about your story, Mattis, and you're definitely telling a story with this piece. Do you mind walking me through that? Well, the inspiration behind it, I think, is really uh, a comment on uh, trying to create a space power for women, um, breaking out of, you can see a desk, and she's actually warping the desk, and she's actually, this is a birth of her, so she's breaking um, the legs, and they're moving, and she's crawling out of, I think, a lot of the constraints that are put on women. A very critical message and one that cannot be ignored, especially within the landscape that we live in today. Thank you so much, Heidi. Not only does your work speak wonders, but it's true what they say, a picture tells a thousand words. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just being here today and being able to soak up all the art has truly inspired me and ignited a lot of thought. These murals will be up until the 30th of June, so I highly encourage you to go out onto the streets and enjoy in a South African township near you. We know that friendships often last a lifetime, but what happens if you feel that you have maybe outgrown a friend? Well, someone to help us read the signs that a friendship has changed is our good friend, Alistair. It is so good to have you again. Thank you so much. Now, we have completely broken down friendships, from healthy friendships to toxic friendships and how to let them go. But another dynamic that we often overlook is if you've outgrown a friend. So what are some of those telltale signs that you've outgrown a friendship that you might have thought would last a lifetime? So thank you. The telltale signs I would say uh, is governed by your values and your actions. So your actions are governed by your values. So essentially if you value time and respect in the friendship value circle, uh, if that person is not aligning with the similar values that you had in the past, mm. that presents itself with a violation of your personal values. So in essence, then you have your answer or your, your, your idea that something is not flowing the way it should in terms of the friendship. That allows you obviously to question it and challenge it with yourself. What has changed in my value systems? And then also have the opportunity and present your case to the friendship and articulate exactly what you feel is missing or what has changed. Mm. Um, in that way, it allows you to have a no blame fault situation where you essentially, you could possibly shake hands, you can walk away, but you've also had the opportunity to articulate what your feelings are and what your concerns are, which also allows the other party to respond and to give you their version of events. Remembering it is your reality and possibly your values have changed and the other person has moved on in another direction. So say for example, if someone has had a child or has, or has, has got a baby or it lives in another city or a country now, even location wise. So the person can no longer be as free of their time with you. Their values are different. Maybe they can't go out to restaurants and the bars and the social scenes that you possibly used to enjoy years ago when you were very close friends. Now the other person has got different values and you feel violated because the person isn't making time for you. Mm -hmm. When in actual fact, it's a very fair reason in their world why they can't make the appointments on time with you. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, sometimes you just feel like a relationship and a friendship has run its course. I mean, for myself, I experience it so often where I find myself in my life going a certain direction, but certain friends that I still love to this day, their life looks completely different. So what are some of those things we can look out for and how does it feel seeing that a relationship has just run its course and maybe you're just forcing it now? 100%. I think sometimes the warranty is just up or the contract has expired <laughs> and you can remember those times fondly when you see the person again, you can reminisce over the good times. It does not mean that you have to reunite and be besties moving on forever and ever. Yeah. You've had your fantastic times, you've had your wonderful memories and you can always really share that joy and then when you cross paths again, it also allows you to reminisce about that. You've now come to this decision and you have now seen that this relationship is no longer serving me, not because it's toxic. They are incredible people, but now our journeys are no longer the same and we don't have anything to talk about. 
What are some of those nuggets of wisdom and those pearls of, 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 of knowledge of how to not only escape from that situation and that mind frame, but also just know that this is not serving me anymore? I think that's a very personal question. I think oh. internally you do know when something is not serving you. Ultimately, you don't need to justify it to the rest of the world. Uh, depending on the person, if the, the, the friendship or the person communicates to you, is something wrong, has something changed, then I think it's fair for you to say, this is how I'm feeling, this is what I've been observing. Remember the person's behavior, it's not the person. So yeah. what's always great and a great buffer to have when you are possibly having a difficult conversation or just being honest, you say, you can say, your behavior or, or, or your activity is, is what no longer in, in alliance with my values. So mm -hmm. I feel violated when you don't meet me on time at the waterfront uh, or I spent an hour and you were on your phone the whole time. Mm -hmm. So those are the little nuggets that I think uh, are, the, are the signs for yourself. And I don't think it's necessarily an explanation that is needed because like you said it's time that we've actually called it the warranty's up i wish you nothing but the best handshake let's stay in touch and you may also want to just move the person to an acquaintance as mm. not a best friend or a bestie anymore because i think what you will find is that there's a network of people that are all intertwined it's not just you and that individual so it makes it very difficult for communal friends mm. if one friend has fallen out because of x y and z Bearing in mind, there's still going to be weddings to go to. There's still going to be gatherings that that person is going, you probably are going to cross paths with because you have got such a history and a network together. Yeah. So it could also be rather selfish if you remove the person completely, rather move it to a civil acquaintance peripheral mm. of the network or circle of friends that you have. Thank you so much, Alistair. You know, every time you sit down with us, as much as we're dealing with tough topics, you make it seem so relatable, so light, and definitely something that we can do and achieve. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> now, this is often such a difficult topic or situation to contend with, but we hope that this interview gave you some food for thought. What a great show, Mzanti. Now, if you have missed anything, be sure to catch the repeats on Sunday at 8.30 a.m. But before I do say goodbye, I want to encourage you to go and vote on the 29th of May. Voting is your chance to stand up for the issues that you care about. This is your life, your future. And with your vote, you have a say in your future. So go and vote. Good night, goodbye, stay safe, and see you again next week. <laughs> Bye. Say goodbye to nausea and cramps and say hello to delicious freedom with Nolax range of lactose-free milk and yogurt. Be free with lactose-free. Another feel-good production.